The year was 1989, and James was right where God had called him. Jesus is the Son of God. Preaching the gospel so that lives would be changed forever. But God had plans that would transform James' life when he and Betty met another evangelist, a South African named Peter Pretorius. Peter showed them the immense suffering people in Mozambique were going through because of the Civil War. You see the thinness of his hair and the color of his hair. That's a sure sign that he suffered much malnutrition. James knew he would never stop ministering the Word of God to the poor in spirit, but now he would do everything he could to help those who were physically perishing. Thus, mission feeding was birthed between James and Peter. And in time, as faithful supporters began to help, feeding efforts expanded into war-torn Angola. It's a refugee area, James, and the refugee problem for a time became solved. But now with the war starting to rear its ugly head again, the whole problem has escalated and you can see the desperate need in the children. So um, the tragedy to start it and then have to stop it. The challenge that lay ahead for the mission feeding program was trying to keep up with the need in crisis areas where food shortages were critical. Children under the age of five were dying at an alarming rate due to the ravages of a silent killer known as malnutrition. I have never seen so many children buried in one small place. More than a thousand bodies here around me right now. And I'm praying, dear God, please, please stop this. I just kneel right here and there's a, there's a fruit jar. And there is the little child's picture in that jar. Somebody's baby. Dear God, help us to save these children. By the grace of God and with the support of faithful partners of Life Outreach International, food factories were built in Mozambique and Angola and began turning out a vitamin-enriched soup mix. A fleet of trucks now deliver the processed food mix into remote villages, this has allowed the mission feeding program to expand into other areas, including South Africa, South Sudan, and Rwanda. Currently, over 400,000 children receive a daily bowl of this soup mix through both the school feeding and crisis feeding programs. This bowl of food not only has helped stop the death cycle in hundreds of villages, but it provides an incentive for the children to remain in school. They want a future. They want to go to school. They walk a long way. They're trying to learn. And I don't know anyone that would look in these faces and not say, well, let me help those children that obviously want a future. The mission feeding program that started over a quarter century ago, helping families in war-torn villages, has literally saved millions of lives, according to government sources. The challenge now is to maintain the support, which will allow the food factories to continue turning out the soup mix for the school feeding program and for crisis feeding in areas where children suffer and die because of severe food shortages.